CBS Television Sports presents the National Football League. From County Stadium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, it's the 20th annual Midwest Shrine football game featuring those longtime rivals, the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ray Scott. By my side, our analyst, Paul Christman. Paul, nice to be with you again. Ray, always fun to start the season. You know these preseason games are to polish the veterans, get a look at the rookies. We have many great rookies on each side. One, I can tell you, and you know, Dave Hampton, number 25 from the Packers. We'll see a lot more, but keep your eye on him. Okay, Paul. To complete our team of CBS broadcast reporters this evening, to the field now, and Bruce Roberts. Well, Ray, late this afternoon and early this evening, the rains came to Milwaukee's County Stadium. The chips has stopped. The field is fast and dry. The temperature, a delightful 71 degrees, and there is little, if any, wind at all. So we have ideal conditions for tonight's game between the Bears and the Packers. We mentioned a moment ago that this is the 20th annual Midwest Shrine football game. And it is indeed more than a football game. It is a true extravaganza in every sense of the word. In just a moment, our masked bands will play our national anthem. We'll take a moment or two, as you might expect, for the field to be cleared, preparatory to the start of this evening's game. And Paul Christman, it'll give me an opportunity to ask you about the latest from the camp of the Chicago Bears, because I do believe that uh, uh, some sort of a virus hit the Bears. Is that right? Ray, I'm sorry to announce, and I don't think they gave us this to announce it, but another six people on their ball club have and hit by this virus today. It's nothing terribly serious, but enough to weaken you. And they don't need any uh, out for an alibi because uh, that forward wall of theirs has just been broken up severely between retirements and uh, people who are not in camp and so forth and so on. They've got a lot of rookies in here. Uh, one of the things tonight that will affect the game just a little bit, the kicker in that weather report that Bruce Roberts gave, humidity 82%. And that means a lot of perspiration, and I'm not saying this to be a, uh, as a gag. I'm serious. You'll, see, you'll probably see a lot of wristbands tonight because people will be, their hands will be like they're playing in rain. They'll be perspiring so much in this type of weather. But it's a magnificent football night. There are the friendly Bears for Wisconsin. <laughs> the Bears have played two preseason games, lost to the Washington Redskins in the Meyer of Robert Kennedy Stadium in Washington. Last week, defeated the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> How about the starting quarterback tonight for the Bears? Uh, what's it's the latest It's going to be that? Jack Concannon, Coach Dooley tells us, and he will stay with him most of the way. We may see a little of Douglas tonight, too. Ray, we have one oddity. Mr. Agajanian is teaching kicking for the Bears. 
There's a young man named Mr. Agajanian on the Packers who is a rookie this year, Larry, 6'3", 250 pounds, a defensive tackle. That is Ben's son on the other side. As far as the Packers are concerned, now, Paul, you made mention of one young man, Dave Hampton, number 25, and uh, although we haven't had a chance to see him in person, I would have to say that uh, for a young man who has played just one preseason game, the word has really spread about this young man from the University of Wyoming. Right. You know, when an exciting runner hits the, the uh, game, as Gail Sayers did a couple of years ago, the word is around immediately, and this is the type of man he is. They will also start Rich Moore from Villanova. Uh, let's get a look at this lineup, though. Ray, you go ahead. We had a quick look at Gail Sayers, and uh, I can say this. Gale, as the Packers take the field here at County Stadium before yet another capacity crowd, Sayers was hit very hard, Paul, on a number of occasions uh, last week against the Miami Dolphins, and he has pronounced himself ready to go, and I believe that head coach Jim Dooley has said he will start. Ray, there is no question in Sayers' mind that he is ready to go. One of the, there he is right there, number 40, one of the difficulties of the knee on the comeback, not only the psychological one that you've heard about, once it's physically okay, sometimes literally the taping gives them trouble. They, until they learn to tape this exactly right, they don't get real great mobility out of the knee, and sometimes they're taped too snug and they can't stretch out on the long run, that type of thing. It takes a few games until the man gets used to that knee being uh, taped exactly the way he wants it, where the trainer wants it. This may be one of the things with Sayers. The officials for tonight's game. The referee is Pat Haggerty. The umpire, Frank Sinkovitz. The headlinesman, Tom Hensley. The line judge, Richard Jorgensen. The back judge, Gordon McCarter. And the field judge is Tony Scover. We'll tell you again, the scene is County Stadium in Milwaukee. The occasion, the 20th annual Midwest Shrine Game. The Green Bay Packers are wearing their dark green jerseys, gold football pants, gold helmets, white numerals. And the Bears, as the visitors, are wearing their white with dark numerals. I do not believe we will have the usual indication as to who won the toss, so we will tell you that the, the Packers did win the toss. They will be receiving at the goal line to your left. The Bears are moving out onto the field as the Packers gather around their head coach, Phil Benson. One of the fine kickers in the National Football League will be kicking off with the Bears in the person of Mac Percival. The Packers have played one preseason game, and their kicker, Mike Mercer, kicked a winning field goal in the closing seconds to allow the Packers to edge the Giants. Deep as Percival tees up the ball. Number 23 is Travis Williams. You remember him. And number 25 is... Paul, rather Dave Hampton, the young man Paul Crispin told you about. So we're about ready to go, and on this very pleasant evening in Milwaukee, we're glad you're with us here on CBS. And I hope I haven't jinxed that young man. Invariably, that happens when you give him a building. Mac Percival of the Bears. Dave Hampton at the five. Tom Greenlee, a defensive back for the Bears, made the tackle. The Packers start from their own 32-yard line, first down 10. Bart Starr, number 15, is the starting quarterback. Anderson, 44, and Grabowski, 33, are the running backs. Donnie Anderson. about four yards to the 36. The wide receivers for Green Bay, number 86, Boyd Dowler, to the left side on the first down play. Number 84, Carol Dale, was wide to the right. And the tight end is number 81, Marv Fleming. The running backs, the quarterback, the wide receivers, the tight end are all veterans. For the Packers, a gain of four to second down six. To the wide side, the left goes Dale, and to the right is Dowler. Just a yard or so for Grabowski. 
veteran quarterback Bart Starr. Hampered much of last season by injuries, and so far in the preseason, he has been physically sound. And also wearing, for the first time, a protective device around his ribs, a very thin layer. I don't know whether it's metal or not. I think it's a type of plastic. At least he has a type of rib pad on tonight, different than anything that's been worn before. Third and five from the Packer 37. Boyd Dowler is at the Bear 49. Here's Dowler up at the top of your picture. He was not the primary receiver. There goes Anderson over the middle, and he circled in and pulled the defender with him momentarily. Dowler was just going straight and turned in at the last moment and took the ball. Lee Calland made the tackle. First and 10 Packers, Bear 49. Donnie Anderson, about a yard. After catching that pass, Dowler left the game and was replaced by Bucky Pope, number 80. We'll set the Packer interior lineman at center, Ken Bowman, 57, a veteran. The guards are Highland, 50, Gillingham, 68. And the tackles are Pay, 71 on the left side, and Heim, 72 on the right side. After this next play, we'll set the Bear defense for you. There is no score. The Packers are second and nine at the Chicago Bear 48. Game just underway. Three minutes old. Incomplete. Mar Fleming, the intended receiver, and Paul, I think, I spotted uh, some Bear linebackers blitzing. Yes, and you also saw what is known in uh, football business by many terms. One of them is a drag pattern. The tight end goes down under controlled speed. The flanker goes down very rapidly. The tight end turns at the last moment to the outside in the vacated area. And they worked it very well. Star barely overthrew him. The Bear front four, Phillips 86, Evie 79, Holman 85, and Obradovich 87. Third and nine. Grabowski. He is close to a first down. Number 71, Francis Pay, applied a crushing block on, uh, on linebacker Dan Pride. Watch the timing on Star. He's really rushed. There's a that's been practiced a lot because he keeps Grabowski right in stride, and that little circle pattern is tough to hit on the run. Watch this block ahead of him now, if we can get a look at it. There it is, right there. That's the block that Ray Scott was talking about, and Grabowski comes up behind. Joe Taylor was injured on the play. A field goal attempt by Mike Mercer, star holding at the Bear 46 on fourth down. It's good. So the Packers lead on Mike Mercer's 46-yard field goal. Joe Runk, a first-year player from Purdue, will be kicking off. Just over 11 minutes left to play, first quarter. 45 is Gordon, and 40 is Sayers. They're inside the Chicago Bear five-yard line. Well, that wasn't uh, Runk. That was Winkler who kicked off. Sayers fumbled. A defensive back, Leon Harden, I believe, recovered the fumble. At any rate, the Packers have the ball, first and ten, at the bare 14-yard line. Anderson and Grabowski are the running backs behind Star. Anderson.
Anderson. To the 11. Defensive back Gary Lyle. Number 44 is in for the Bears, and we'll set the rest of the Bear defense for you now. If we told you the front four of Phillips, Evie, Pullman, and Obradovich. The linebackers are Buffon, 55, Butkus in the middle, 51, and Pride, 57, on the right. With only two pops and eight yards to go, don't be surprised if he throws. Remember, he's got to make it in two, or else he has to take the field goal, unless he's very close to a first down on fourth. Grabowski to about the eight yard line where he is met by number 87, Ed Obradovich. The deep four for the Bears. Joe Taylor, number 20, is the right cornerback. Benny McCray, 26, is the left cornerback. Deep are Lee Callen, 23, and Gary Lyle, 44. Now in Starr's position, what do you do? Five yards to go. He must have great faith in his running game, as you saw there. Do you run twice and try to get to the five, or do you throw once, and if it fails, go for the field goal? Take your charge. Third and five, Anderson. It appears that Starr wanted to get the ball into good position for a kick around the five-yard line. That did look like a position play. He's right almost in the middle of the field. And so Mike Mercer. The Packer field goal kicker comes in. He would have had another choice, it, it, assuming he is going to kick on this play. But had they been closer, say down to one yard or a half a yard, he probably would have gone for the first down down here instead of taking the field goal. But he has almost two and a half yards to go. Mercer kicked five field goals in the winning effort against the Giants. And he does it again. The Packers lead six to nothing. Well, Paul, uh, a bit of a trickery by the Packers in that last kickoff. Uh, it wasn't Runk who kicked off, but the man alongside of him, uh, Winkler. Yes, because the two bare deep receivers are standing together, and they've isolated them on, on one side of the field by kicking on the side on the hash mark there, as you see. Comparatively short. Gordon has it at the 15. He is tackled by Dave Hampton. And the Bears have it at the Bears' 17-yard line. We remind you this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. Mike Mercer who is two for two in field goals tonight, and seven already in the first two games. Concannon at quarterback. The handoff is to Ronnie Bull, number 29. Ray, let's explain that kickoff a little more thoroughly. We didn't have enough time there. Sayers and Gordon, the deep receivers, stand together. They don't like to spread so that the kicking team doesn't know who's going to get the ball. But when the kicking team, the Packers, moved over to the right hash mark, that moved both receivers over to the Bears' left hash mark, leaving the wide open section of the field, which they kicked to on that opening kick. Sayers, number 40, lined up behind the quarterback, Concannon. On second down, eight. Sayers. Watch number 66 put the stop on him here. Meets him at the line of scrimmage right there. And takes him down. There was a gain of about two and a half yards and for the Bears who trail six nothing here midway in the first quarter. It's third and five from their 22. Sayers. To the 29 yard line. It will be fourth down three. Just in case anybody didn't recognize number 66 Ray, that's the venerable Ray Nitsky who is playing just as well as the first year he came in the league. The punter for the Bears is in Bobby Joe Green, number 88. The clock shows a bit over six minutes left to play in the first quarter. 
Packers lead, Hampton 25, and at the bottom of the screen, Travis Williams 23. Inside the Packer 30 to receive an expected punt from the Bears, Bobby Green. That's Ronnie Bull blocking in front of the punter. Fair catch, Hampton at the Packer 40. And for the Packers, number 15, Starr, will be the quarterback. Number 33, Grabowski. Number 44, Anderson, will be the running backs. Dale, 84. Dowler, 86, will be the two wide receivers as we look at the Green Bay Packer bench. 6-0, Green Bay. Five and a half minutes remaining first quarter. To the right side comes Dale. The receiver, Carol Dale, was ruled to have been out of bounds. Defending was Lyle, 44, and McCray, 26. See if there are any changes for uh, the Bears. Evie, 79, Phillips, 86, Holman, 85, Obradovich, 87. They're the front four. Second down, 10 Green Bay from the Packer 40. Dowler left, Dale right. Grabowski. He is inside the Bear 45-yard line. And you, you know what that play is. That's the old, old draw. It's a simulated pass. It looks like Starr's going back to throw. Watch him. See the handoff? There he goes. Picking up a blocker right here on the first man. And if you can get by that first pileup, you've got a little room to maneuver. Here goes Grabowski. It's a first down for the Packers at the Bear 44. The big block was by Donnie Anderson. Anderson. Gain of about eight yards before McCray and Lyle made the tackle. Take a look at it now. Watch the guard pull ahead. There's a good block right there. They trapped the outside man there, or took him to the outside. Anderson spinning, picking up some yardage on his own after he leaves his blockers. Second down, a little more than two yards to go for a first down. Six nothing, the Packers lead. Four minutes left to play, first quarter. Grabowski, and there's nothing there. Third down and two. Donnie Anderson. And again, there is no gain. No gain, and it's fourth down. And uh, Mike Mercer, it appears, is going to uh, try yet another field goal. I don't think you can credit any slick feel to that slip there. This field is in excellent shape. They had a slight drizzle in the afternoon, but it never did pour down, and the field is in good shape now. The Bears are dropping back Lee Callan, one of their defensive backs. Star in holding position around the Bear 43-yard line. Mercer has already kicked one of 46 and then a short one. It is wide to the left. And on the touchback, the Bears take over. Again, the Bear running backs are Bull 29, Sayers 40. Wide to the right, Gordon 45. And Copeland, 36. Concannon at quarterback from the Bear, 20. Sayers for three. There he is met by Nitschke. The tight end for the Bears is Austin Denny, 84. The Bear interior lineman. Jackson, 65, left tackle. Prewald, 60, left guard. Pyle at center, 50. Cadeal at right guard, 72. And... 
Rufus Mays, number 71 at right tackle. For the Bears, second down, seven. Ronnie Bull into the heart of the Packer defensive line. Met first by linebacker Leroy Cathy, number 60. Number 38 coming off the bench for the Bears right now is a wide receiver, Ray Ogden. He's going in at a tight end right now in place of Denny on third down three for the Bears from the Bear 27. A little over a minute left to play. First quarter, the Packers lead 6-0. Sayers. It appears that Sayers is just shy of a first down. He had to reach the 30. Nitschke, number 66. 87, Willie Davis. The Bears shy of a first down by a yard. It is fourth and one. Green is in the punt. To Hampton, 25. And Williams, that's Travis Williams, 23. Now there is another Williams with the Packers. Perry Williams, a first year back from Purdue. Williams at the 16. He gets it to the 27-yard line, and Rudy Kuchenberg met him there. It's fine coverage by the Bears, Ray, because he outkicked his tacklers, and when that happens, that's the time when the man gets a chance to receive the ball and get a little running room. That's where trouble develops, but they covered the kick very well. Just a couple of seconds left to play in the first quarter. We may not get off the play. We will not. There's the gun. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Green Bay Packers six, the Chicago Bears nothing. The Packers have several changes. The running backs are now Travis Williams, 23, and Mercine, 30. And at a guard, Bill Luke, number 32, has replaced Bob Hyland. Bart Starr is still at quarterback. Travis Williams and a loss of two. Dick Evie mainly responsible for stopping that play, number 79. I said Luke 32, Bill Luke is 62. Loss of two, second down 12, the Packers from the Packer 25. The Bears still have the same front four, Phillips, Evie, Coleman Obradovich. To the right, Dowler. To the left, Dale on second down 12. <laughs> Intended for Chuck Mercine. Obradovich was applying great pressure on Bart Starr. And that's what caused that miss, because as I told you, that to keep a runner, to keep a receiver in perfect stride on that little circle pattern that the fullback runs or the uh, back that stays in is awfully hard to do. Frequently, you'll see him have to turn around, and in that time, even if he catches the ball, he loses his momentum. And that rush by Obradovich caused that throw to be a little off target. It's third and 12 for Green Bay from the Packers 25. Fleming. Dick Butkus made the tackle with help from Lee Callen, number 23, on Marv Fleming, the Packer tight end. And it's a first down for Green Bay at the Green Bay 41. Mercine for a quick couple. There was a gain of three. It is second down, seven Green Bay from the Packer 44. Travis Williams. One yard where he met Willie Holman. Third down, six. 
A quick observation, I would have to say that their front seven is working just about as well as they did at the end of the year last year. They, they play a very grudging game on defense. They give that yardage up in a tough way. Starr sends Dale to the right and Dowler to the left. Mercine. Oh, that was six buckets and put a shoulder. Watch Star look downfield. Man downfield is covered. He turns and throws to the safety valve man here. Now here is a blocker. He doesn't even need to block. They evade right there. You'll see Mr. Butkus after a twist here by the runner. He's partially tackled. Watch 51 come out of nowhere from the left of your screen. Right here, and it's good night, Irene. Fourth and four. A short punt. It's down at the bare 29-yard line. Ken Vineyard, a first-year kicker from Texas Tech, was doing the punting that time. And there's a penalty flag upfield at the Packer 35-yard line. A personal foul. Roughing the kicker against the Bears. First down, Green Bay at the Bear 38-yard line. Particularly tough break for the Bears because that was the first time they would have been off of their own 20. To my knowledge, Concannon has not thrown yet, but he's been in the shadow of his own goalpost each time that he goes in there. He's only been in two series. To the right is Dale, and to the left is Dowler. Mercine to the 35. Eighty-six there is Phillips, seventy-nine Evie, fifty-one Dick Butkus. 57 is the new member of that front seven that uh, Paul Christen was talking about. Dan Pride replaced Jim Purnell, who was traded. Mercine left the game limping. <laughs> Travis Williams looking for a receiver. Deal. The new man in the backfield who came in when Mercine was injured is the other Williams of the Packers. So we have Travis Williams, 23, and Perry Williams, 31, a first year back from Purdue in the game now for Green Bay. You know, in the last series, Travis Williams ran that same play, which is obviously a, a, an option pass a run for the halfback, halfback option, they call it. And at that time, he gave a little ground, and I wondered if he was dropping back to, to throw on the previous down. This time he did it. Third down, seven. Ten and a half minutes left to play first half. Six nothing, Green Bay. Starr loses about four. Ed Obradovich wraps him up around the 40. And in comes the kicking unit, and that means Mike Mercer. He has been successful on two of three this evening. He has one to his credit of 46 yards. It would appear this will be from about 47 or 48. Lee Calland is back inside the 10 for the Bears. We'll watch from behind the goalpost. At the 47 of the Bears, Star is holding.
may be a little bit trite to say it, Paul, but certainly the foot's been in football here tonight as far as the Packers are concerned. He's kicking this thing like it's going out of style. He had plenty of room to spare on that one from 47. The Packers have scored 31 points now in two games, and he's scored all but six. Now, that's Winkler kicking off. This is Gordon running for it at the six. Out to around the 30. And ridden down by Leon Harden is Dick Gordon. And Jack Concannon, the Chicago Bear quarterback, will put the ball in play from the Bear 30. Concannon out on the 30 now with a little room to operate, a little elbow room. You might see the ball in the air a little bit now. The Packer front four, Aldridge 82, Richmore 70, Jordan 74, Davis 87. Gordon to the left, Copeland to the left. Concannon looking for Sayers. Caffey was in pursuit. It's incomplete. The Chicago Bear interior lineman, 71 there, is Rufus Mays, the big and highly regarded first-year player from Ohio State at offensive right tackle. Cadil, 72 at right guard. Pyle, 50 at center. Freewald, 60 at the other guard and Jackson 65 at the other tackle. It's second and 10 the Bears from the Bear 30. Gordon, he might have a first down. The ball is right on the 40 yard line. All right, this is Gordon. Watch his stop pass now. Bang, he puts his foot down. There's the ball in there right on time, and that's the kind of a pass, believe it or not. Just a little bit more time to maneuver when a fast man like Gordon cannot maneuver even two tacklers at times, and, you, and your five-yard pass goes for 50 yards. Jeter made the tackle. The Bears have their initial first down of the game. Incomplete. Gordon... Intended receiver, Adderley, was the cornerback, number 26, defending. And to complete the Packer defense, the deep men are Doug Hart, 43, and Willie Wood, 24. And I'm sure you notice a similarity. Garden on the left, a five-yard stop pass. He made a first down. Garden on the right, the same thing on this side. They're testing both cornerbacks to see how tightly they are playing a flanking and our back. Concannon has completed one of three. It is second and ten for the Bears from their 40. Sayers. At the 43-yard line, he met Willie Wood and then Nitschke. Ray, there's another thing to know about that five-yard stop pass as far as the passer is concerned. If he is unsure with rookie blockers in here, whether they'll be able to handle the uh, veteran defensive line of the Packers or any other team. That short pass requires n almost no protection. It's gotten on very quickly, so he doesn't need great blocking. In this way, he can get an idea while he's throwing whether he does have good blocking or not. It's a third and seven play coming up. And Cannon. Doug Hart almost intercepted in front of Austin Denny, the intended receiver, and it is fourth and seven. That was a screen pass, and the screen man was covered. He had no place to unload the ball, but there was really no danger when he saw the situation developing. It looked like a near interception, but he threw that thing down all the way. It would have been almost impossible to intercept. Wisely done. The score is 9-0. The Packers are leading. Eight minutes left to play first half, and Green is in to punt for the Bears. Same two deep men for Green Bay. Travis Williams, 23. Dave Hampton, 25. Boy, he hung this one up in the air. Fair catch. Whoop! I don't know whether he touched it or not. No, it is a touchback. Travis Williams very nearly and if he had touched that thing and it rolled in the end zone, the Bears got it. That's a free ball. It would have been six points. With the score, 
the Packers nine, and the Bears nothing. A number of changes for the Packers. A new quarterback, Don Horn, number 13. Wide receivers, 85, Spillis, 41, Fredenberg. Running backs are the two Williams. Travis Williams, no game. Take a look at Butkus, number 51, right here. Middle linebacker. Watch him play the play. As soon as he sees the handoff, moves to the hole. There he is, in the hole, helping on the tackle. He had to come in high because he had a tackler under him. There was no gain. It is second and ten. Frettenberg, 41 left side, 85, Spillis right side. About three yards for Travis Williams. Met by Phillips, 86. Seven minutes left in the first half. The Packers are leading by three Mike Mercer field goals. One of 47, one of 46 yards, and another from in close. Just in case anybody in Chicago doesn't remember Mr. Horn, number 13, he came off the bench last year and gave him all the trouble in that final game as he came out of the service a few days before. It's third and seven. Penalty flags all over the place. Horn nailed back inside the 20-yard line by Dick Evie. This penalty, I am almost positive, is going to be on the Packers. And, Ray, I should have explained we could have almost expected that, when, particularly at this time of the year. When you change quarterbacks, you get a new rhythm in your call, and very often you see an offsides or a lineman backing up a little early on the play, starting a little early, and that's what you saw there. The Bears stopped him and, of course, refused the penalty. It was a loss anyway. In the punt is Vineyard. Sayers has been joined by Lyle this time. Deep men for the Bears. Fair catch by Sayers at the 37-yard line of the Bears. Ronnie Bull, number 29, and Gail Sayers, number 40, will be the Chicago running backs. Con Cannon will be the quarterback again, number 11. Copeland, 36. Gordon, 45. They'll be the wide receivers. The tight end is Denny, 84. The clock shows 6-10 left to play in the first half as the Bears come up to the line of scrimmage, first and 10 at the Bear 36-yard line. This is Sayers. The Packers had Robinson, the left linebacker, blitzing. And there's a gain on the play of about eight yards. I think just that little maneuver after Sayers caught the ball indicates and should to you that he still has that great mobility. I believe the only question is going to be now is if Sayers pops open for a long gain, whether he can stretch out like he used to so very rapidly. We'll, we may see that before the evening is over. Several changes for Green Bay. Rouser, 45, at the one corner. Flanagan, 55, is a linebacker in the middle. Second and two. Sayers, met by Robinson and Flanagan. Gain of one. It'll be third and one. Ogden, number 38. Ray Ogden is in now a tight end in place of Denny for the Bears. Third down, about two yards to go for a first down. Gordon to the left. Ogden to the left. Penalty flags are down. Ronnie Bull was trying to run wide. The official attendance tonight, 47,014. The penalty against the Packers. It gives the Bears a first down at the Chicago 49-yard line. Illegal procedure is the penalty. 
third quarter score. Philadelphia Eagles 14, Miami Dolphins 3. Brian Piccolo, one of the Bears who has been hit by the, I guess it was uh, the flu bug, wasn't it, Paul? Yes, he was the original case that they had on the ball club. He was hit the hardest. He's in there now, Brian Piccolo replacing Sayers. Almost intercepted by Flanagan. It was intended for Piccolo. This is Brian Piccolo, number 41. Watch him. There's a little circle pattern right here. And you'll see it's almost intercepted at the last moment right there. A drop, fortunately, for the Bears. A change defensively for the Packers. Vandersee, number 83, at defensive right end. For the Bears, second down 10 from their 49. Four and a half minutes left to play first half. The Packers lead 9-0. Concannon. A screen to Piccolo. And Dave Robinson has him. After a gain of a yard. Brian Piccolo. Last year, after Sayers got hurt, did a tremendous job for the Bears. He had a he had a very fine year. I think the whole ball club, Ray, decided they just didn't have the big breakaway man anymore, and they had to go, and that all of the running backs picked up, it seemed like. Bobby Lee, number 46, is in as a wide receiver for the Bears on the left side, along with Gordon on third and nine. Denny, the intended receiver, Caffey and Robinson were pressuring Concannon. It is fourth and nine. Green in to punt. The last time he punted, I think he had one of about 58 yards. Fair catch. Travis Williams, fumble. Bears have it. The Bears have it around the Packers 25-yard line. Watch him go through a sea of white jerseys here, make a dive for the ball. Looked like he had it. He gets it in his arms. No, just out on his fingertips. And he drops it. Went through his hands, and it's recovered by the Bears. Tim Casey, one of the Bear linebackers, and Dan Pride were there, and one of the two of them came up with the ball. See if Concannon runs or tries to hit quickly here. Let's find out. First and 10 Bears at the Packer 25. Ronnie Bull. He ran into Flanagan, 55, and Kathy, 60, and Rich Moore, 70. Less than three minutes left to play in the first half. It's second and eight for the Bears at the Packer 23. Jackson Cannon has quarterbacked the Bears all of the first half. He sends Lee and Gordon to the left. His tight end is on the right side, Denny. Ryan Piccolo inside the 20-yard line, where it will be third down. And about four. Now Copeland replaces Lee, number 36, Copeland, for the Bears. And probably a play coming in. He has two choices here, either run or position and hope to pick up the first down, or throw and try to pick up the first down, which is the easier, the quickest way to get the five yards, of course, because it's a pretty long way to run, and then take the field goal if he doesn't. Jack Concannon has huddled at the sidelines with Jim Dooley and members of Jim Dooley's coaching staff. And for the Bears, it's third and four at the Packer 19. Two minutes left to play first half. Nine nothing, Green Bay. Practically no gain as Phil Vanderson nailed Ronnie Bull at the line of scrimmage. So now Mac. Percival, the Chicago Bear place kicker, comes in on fourth down and four. Concannon is in holding position at the 26-yard line of Green Bay. So, Mac. 
Percival puts the Bears on the board. It's now nine to three in favor of the Packers. 26 yard field goal for Mac Percival who blossomed uh, blossomed last year into one of the outstanding kickers in professional football. Percival kicks. Travis Williams. Oh. Out across the 20 to about the Packer 24 yard line with just over a minute remaining in the first half. You know the oldest saw in football is make a mistake in professional football and it'll cost you a couple of points. We've seen two fumbles tonight immediately followed by two field goals by the opponent. That's how fast it works. Fredenberg is wide to the left 41 Horn 13 is the Packer quarterback. This is Phyllis out at the 36 yard line. It would appear the Packers are going into their two minute drill. There will be no huddle here. Benny McCray made the tackle that time. The Bears of course are taking their time getting back across the line of scrimmage. Clock is running. Now we're ready to go first and ten. Butkus broke that down intended for Dowler. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the Bears had dropped off the line that time <laughs> in defending against the obvious pass. That's a prevent, prevent. Boy. It's second and ten for the Packers. The clock shows 35 seconds left to play in the first half. Number 31 is Perry Williams. He picked up about five yards to the Packer 41. The Packers immediately called timeout. A new center now for the Packers. Number 58, Francis Winkler, is at center. Ray, one of the things I noticed. I've often wondered about as Don Horn goes over to the sideline to confer with his coaching staff. Uh, the the uh, National Football League changed the rule a number of years ago, and rightfully so, because when you're doing this hurry up thing and you said no huddle, they will continue to go without a huddle. You saw some of the Bears, after a completed pass against the Bears, walking back down the field and walking right through the huddle or right through the huddle area of the Packers. In other words, they couldn't start the play until the Bears had gotten on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Some years ago, that used to delay you. You couldn't go fast because you were waiting for the defense to get back. Unless you wanted to call a play and catch them off sides, and that often worked against you as well as them, broke your timing. But now the time doesn't start till everybody gets back across the line of scrimmage. Third and five. <laughs> It's ruled a fumble. That was not ruled an attempted pass. That ball was loose. Holman jarred the ball loose from Horn. Take another look at it now. This is a this is a three man rush, and you see the way they worked a stunt on that thing. And he got to him there. Now he raised his arm, but he was not bringing it forward to throw. He was pulling his arm back down. And as he brought his arm back down to clutch the ball to his side, it went out of his hand. That was a real good rush for three men. Travis Williams recovered the ball for the Packers. Vineyard is punting. The all-out rush was on, and somebody partially blocked it, I do believe. It is down at the Packer 45-yard line by Terry Fredenberg. And the Bears now have asked for a timeout. The clock shows seven seconds. There you can see it. Seven seconds left to play in the first half. Well. Breaks have had a lot to do with our nine to three score as Paul Crispin pointed out several moments ago. 
Bears guilty of a fumble immediately turned into a three pointer by the Packers and Travis Williams fumble of a punt turned into a field goal by Percival who right now has come onto the field. Mac Percival with Concannon in holding position. Now look, watch closely. From 52 yards, Percival will apparently try a field goal. <laughs> Willie Wood. And there's the gun. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Green Bay Packers 9, the Chicago Bears 3. Oh, I'm a 34 Phaeton, and I'm considered rather regal, and just as hard to find as a long-legged beagle. Who are you? I'm me. I'm an international highway sign. Here in Germany, an international highway sign? Correct. I come in different shapes. Well, what does that sign mean right there? Oh, that sign says, do not enter, as you can see. I'll tell you a story if you listen to me. Tell away. In Germany, a soldier named Mar saw a circle around a big white bar. It stood like a sentry, proclaiming no entry, and it meant both Mar and his car. How droll. So now you know. Thank you, Mr. Sign. And away we go. Play the wise man, not the fool. When you drive a car, man, drive cool. Back to football and halftime here at Milwaukee County Stadium. It's the Packers 9 and the Bears 3. Let's take a look at some of the highlights and we see that Winkler kicks off in a surprise maneuver and it caught everybody's surprise. Watch Gale Sayers. He goes up high for the ball. And he fumbles it with a Green Bay recovery. Mike Mercer kicks three field goals. Now let's take a look at the, the second. Star holding, it's up. And it's good. Made it 6 nothing. You want to see a well-executed draw play? Watch this one as Grabowski, on the draw, goes for about 30 yards. There he goes, 33. Let's take a look at that one again in slow motion. And you see how a draw play should be run. The handoff. The offensive linemen committed themselves. Great block. And Grabowski continues on, going for 30 yards. Here's Mike Mercer's third field goal. His eighth in a row. Long enough. He got it. Now for uh, one of the few bear highlights of the first half, watch Travis Williams call for a fair catch, and he just seems to lose the ball. Got it, then he hasn't, and the Bears recover. Let's take a look at that one again in slow motion. It seems that he might have taken his eye off the ball at the very last moment. Again, we see Bobby Joe Green of the Bears back to punt. And there you see Williams looking, 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 and out of reach. It falls to his right and in back, and the Bears recover and later score the field goal. Now we have statistics of the first half. Green Bay, five first downs. The Chicago Bears could only manage two. In total offensive yardage, the Packers, 84. The Bears, 44. And that yards rushing, 46 to 25. And in passing, 38 to 19. So the statistics fairly well uh, reflect the score of 9 to 3 at halftime with the Green Bay Packers ahead. Now let's return to the booth and Ray Scott. Thank you, Bruce Roberts. Well, we're almost ready to begin the second half with Green Bay kicking to Chicago. So the score, as we're just about ready to start the second half, the Green Bay Packers 9 the Chicago Bears three as Mike Mercer has kicked
three field goals and Mac Percival the one for the Bears. I uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a first here, Paul. I ordinarily wouldn't do this, but I know that our uh, director would, would dearly love to know what is up on the scoreboard here in the way of a message under fanagram. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to... Oh, they took it down. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what it said, folks. It said, CBS TV, we love you for your great job. And I thought it was yes. too good to pass up, and wouldn't you know it, they took it down. Pretty good rock you pulled on that one. <laughs> it worked. There's an instant replay of what you didn't see. <laughs> so the Packers are getting ready to kick off. Deep for the Bears. And, well, some Packer fans are showing how they feel about the upcoming season. Sayers and Gordon. Back, and it appears that Joe Runk will kick. But remember now, number 58 to his right actually kicked in the first half in this same situation. Gordon chasing it. He will not run it out. And so the Bears, down 9-3, to three, will start first down 10 from the Chicago Bear 20-yard line. Coach Jim Dooley of the Bears indicated that he would go with Jack Concannon most of the game at quarterback, and Concannon is in there now. His running backs are Sayers, 40, and Bull, 29. Wide receivers, Gordon, 45. Copeland, 36, to the left side. Sayers. About five yards for Gale Sayers. Sayers up until tonight had carried the ball 15 times for 69 yards. And all of that came last week against the Miami Dolphins because in the rain and mud of the game against the Redskins, he did not carry the ball from scrimmage. Second down, five and one half. Ronnie Bull, close to a first down at the 29. There, he's met by number 74 of the Packers, Henry Jordan. I don't know what Coach Dooley said at the half to the Bears, but the last two plays, they have moved, although they weren't long gains, they have moved that Packer defensive line out of there better in two plays than they have the entire first half. In other words, they have a much better charge the second half up to here. Third and a half yard to go for a first down. <laughs> Sayers. I think you'll see guard Doug Crewall at the bottom there for the Bears. Aldridge of the pack is 82. There's Crewall, number 60. 89, Robinson. It is fourth down and short of a first down. By about uh, a foot or so, and Bobby Joe Green is in the punt. Packers had nine men up at the front that time, and wisely so, they gambled there'd be no throw, and they've stopped that first down attempt. 23 is Travis Williams. Bottom of the screen, 25, Dave Hampton. Bears down it at the Packer 27-yard line as Williams and Hampton elected not to handle the punt. Ralph Keurig downed it at that point. Here's a second quarter score. New Orleans 16, Denver nothing. Right here, the score is 9-3 to three in favor of the Packers. 13 minutes left to play third quarter. At quarterback, Starr. Running backs, Anderson 44, Grabowski 33. Grabowski. Out 
Out of bounds around the 30 yard line. Gain of a little better than three yards. Second down, six. 44 is Donnie Anderson. 86 there is veteran wide receiver Boyd Dowler. To the left, Dale. To the right, Dowler on second down, seven. Grabowski to the 33. Final score, the Philadelphia Eagles 14, the Miami Dolphins 10. Frank Cornish is in the front line now, number 73 for the Bears, joining EV 79, Phillips 86, and Holman 85, as Obradovich is getting a rest. For the Packers, third down and four yards away from a first down. Intended for Dale. Linebacker Doug Buffon covered that receiver. Rather, the intended receiver was Donnie Anderson, not Carol Dale. And Buffon did a good job because it was partially batted, almost caught, and batted again. Buffon stayed with him until he finally had to drop the ball. Fourth down. Vineyard in to punt. Deep stairs around the bare 20, 10 yards in front of him, Lyle. Lyle at the 25. Oh, a determined run back by Lyle to around the bare 31 where Leon Harden made the tackle. Three and a half minutes have gone by in the second half. The Bears are first and 10 at their 31. And Cannon intended for Ronnie Bull with Doug Hart coming up to cover. Okay, Paul, second and 10, the Bears from their 31. Tight end. Austin Denish for about an eight yard gain. Only this, uh, speaking of sending in questions, uh, speaking for all of the analysts in the league, in both leagues as a matter of fact, I'm sure I am when I say that many times we receive questions from fans in the mail that require five and six pages to answer, to give a real good answer. And I'll be delighted to dis discuss these things rather than try to write them to all the people. For the Bears, third down and two. To the right, Gordon. Everybody else set in tight for the Bears. <laughs> Gordon has a first down at the 43. He is hit very hard by Herb Adderley, number 26. That Incidentally, it was an excellent call and very well done by Concanon because the last time he had a couple of yards to go, Green Bay pulled that nine-man line on him. He couldn't make it. He made the quick throw here, which is rather safe, but must be timed very rapidly because they play the receiver close, knowing that that nine-man line will be barreling in there, and he has to, the passer has to release quickly. Five of 11 completions for Concanon. Out of bounds. Gordon breaking downfield. Robinson dropped off and Adderley were covering. And there was a mix up on that play. Watch Concannon there in number 11 coming over to talk to his man. Gordon ran a stop and go. Concannon threw a stop. And this is very dangerous because there's no receiver there when the ball comes down and there might be an enemy and that's almost what happened. And what probably happened was he said we're going to throw a stop but if you're closely covered run a stop and go pattern. He thought he was open on the stop, but the receiver didn't, and he kept going. It's second and 10 from the Bear 43. Sayers got away from Adderley. Double, 
And I think Sayers recovered, yes, at the Packer 39-yard line. Take a look at Sayers, top of your screen, a little swing pattern. Now watch, here's what we were wondering. Watch him stretch out right here. Now this is what we were wondering, whether he could do it or not. See those legs stretch out. There doesn't appear any to be anything wrong with that. Here's a little maneuver right here. He cuts on the bad knee, bad leg, I should say, with no apparent trouble. Looks like Mr. Sayers is headed for a pretty good year, and he recovers his own fumble there. First down the Bears at the Packer 39. He's throwing for Gordon. That was a fly pattern or a goal pattern. You just get into the starting blocks and set sail. They've been doing all that foolishness on the sideline. I mean, the quick stops and the turnouts and so forth. He did a little jog step and just kept right on going. So we have a tie game, and Mac Percival is in to try and put the Bears ahead by a point. 39 yards, Concannon to Gordon. When I say all the foolishness, I mean he was trying to set up a couple of defensive backs is what he was doing. Concannon holding for Percival. The Bears lead by 10 to 9. These same two longtime rivals, you know, meet on the opening day of the NFL season in Green Bay on September 21. Mac Percival prepares to kick off. Dave Hampton. He's upset by linebacker Tim Casey at about the 18-yard line of the Packers. The running backs for Green Bay will be 33 Grabowski, 44 Anderson. The quarterback is star. Wide right, Dale. Wide left, Dowler. Watch him cross to his left. This is a long crossover pattern. Watch him see star throw between the defenders there. They're dropping straight back in a line, pretty straight back, and he waits for the receiver to go between them. 25-yard gain. First down at the Packer 43. Grabowski. Out of bounds at the Bear 43-yard line. Now they hook the Bear defensive end. Hold, keep him in there. Here comes Grabowski. Around the end, the eventual tackler, who didn't tackle him, knocked him out of bounds, just uh, gave him a rolling block there. Fell down, got up in time to just shove him out of bounds there over the sideline. It's a first down for the Packers at the Bear 43-yard line. Coleman caught Starr from behind for a loss of about 10. For the Bears now, in addition to Holman, number 85, Cornish 73, Evie 79, and Amsler 81 make up the front four. A loss of 10 yards, it is second down 20. That's the first time a real good rush has been put on Starr. And of course, this will give a lot of momentum to that Bear defensive line. The Bears are leading by a score of 10 to 9 after trailing by 9 nothing. Dowler to the wide side of the field, the right. And the Bears have the ball at the Packer 15-yard line.
Watch Carol Dale slip past the Major Hazelton here. There, see Dale right down here? And there Hazelton takes the ball. It was thrown to the short man. He stepped inside of him, picked it off. So here are the Bears. First and 10 at the Packer 15. 7.45 left to play third quarter. Running backs now are Montgomery 22 and Hull 33. Montgomery. About two yards. Ross Montgomery, number 22, is a first year back from Texas Christian, 6'3, 220. We have not seen it this year. We saw it a lot last year. Concannon is a good runner, and in this situation, oftentimes came up with the rollout play. As I say, I haven't seen him use it much or at all this year, certainly not in this ball game. But this is the type of situation Concannon used to like to run the rollout option pass our run. Second down, nine. Incomplete at the goal line. Intended for Gordon. Bobby Lee is in now as one of the wide receivers for the Bears, number 46. For the Bears now, it is third and nine at the Packer 14. And Cannon is a little mad at himself there. He actually hurt himself. He had enough time, but this happens to passes after they've been rushed enough time. When they do get enough time, they, they just uh, automatically hurry a little bit. He threw a little sooner than he, he wanted to, didn't get himself set, and didn't get the ball on target. He's mad at himself. Seven of 15 passes completed by Concannon, one touchdown. <laughs> Mike Hall, no game. Position play for the field goal. Lionel Aldridge met Hall at the line of scrimmage, and Mac Percival comes in with the other members of the... Chicago Bear kicking unit. When we say position play, that doesn't mean necessarily he's just running to a spot and dropping dead. It means he's going to a particular hole and trying to blast through it for a first down, but if he doesn't, he ends up in good position for a field goal attempt. Concannon holding at the Packer 22. Percival hits yet another one. The Bears lead 13 to 9. Mac Percival tees it up. Dave Hampton, number five, 25, one of the two deep men for the Packers. The other is 23, Travis Williams. Travis Williams at the two. To the 23-yard line. Emilio Baez made the tackle. This is the 50th year of National Football League activity. So, of course, attention will center on the Pro Football Hall of Fame this year in Canton, Ohio. The greatest stars of the game are enshrined there. Historical highlights of 75 years of pro football activity are shown to the public there. Donnie Anderson. Maybe a yard gain. Doug Buffon led the defensive charge, number 55 for the Bears. Another note on the Hall of Fame uh, in Canton, Ohio. Here are the hours. Daily, 9 in the morning till 8 in the evening through August. And it closes at 5 o'clock each day, starting in September. Ray, when you consider how difficult it is even to make a professional team, and then you think of those people who were selected to be above and beyond their contemporaries, what great players they must have been. There was no gain. It is second and ten. Dowler. He's at the 38-yard line and a Packer first down. Dan Pride made the tackle. Starr has had pretty good success everywhere tonight. I'm sure his percentage is very high. But he is having great success over the middle against the Bears, particularly on the crossover stuff. You saw one to Carol Dale a little while ago. You saw that one to Dollar coming back the other direction. John Johnson, 76, and Cornish, 73, are the Bear tackles right now. Dollar. 
44-yard line, Major Hazelton made the tackle. Gain on the play of about five to six yards. Starr has gone to the air now 11 times. He has completed six. He has had one intercepted. It is second and four for the Packers at the Packer 44. Four minutes left to play third quarter. 13 to nine is the score and the Bears are leading. To the right side goes Dale. Dowler to the left. Grabowski. Marty Amsler led the defensive charge and Grabowski got only about a yard. Third down three at the Packer 45. Hazelton runs over toward the bare bench and he's coming out. Rosie Taylor replaces him, number 24. Willie Holman, watch this. See him come under his blocker. There was a blocker on him. Great tackle. Got that shoulder up just in time to trip Anderson there. That's Willie Holman. Defensive tackle. Give you a few statistics. 6'4, 250 from South Carolina State. Sayers deep. Lyle in front of him. And Donnie Anderson is in the punt. Penalty marker is down. Lyle, fair catch. The Bears 16, but a penalty marker is at the 45 yard line of Green Bay. So we'll watch referee Pat Haggerty. Dick Butkus, who captains the Bear defensive unit indicates he wants the ball to come back. It's a five yard penalty against the Packers. The percentage is with Butkus on that choice because with any kind of a break at all he'll get any run back obviously is better than a fair catch and he's hoping to get a little time to get one of his run back men started here or block a kick or have a bad kick any number of things. Just over two minutes left to play in the third period. The Packers have Donnie Anderson back at the 20. Bears, fair catch, 23 yard line. They picked up seven yards, about six or seven yards by virtue of accepting the penalty. That's better than a sharp stick in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> the Chicago Bear running backs are Montgomery, 22, and Hull, 33. Montgomery. Willie Davis made the tackle, but the Bears picked up close to five yards on that running play. There's Willie Davis, 87, 74, Henry Jordan. Jim Flanagan is in at middle linebacker for the Packers, number 55. Fred Carr, number 53, is at the right linebacking spot. There was a gain of four at a second down six. yardage this time for Mike Hull. Dave Robinson was the first to make contact. For the Bears, third down, four. And you know, you mentioned a name there, probably the most underrated and underpublicized linebacker, in my opinion, in the National Football League, Dave Robinson. I just happened to watch him that time. They have all the great linebacking at Green Bay, but you hear his name the least. He just calmly took an end position. There he is right there. 
gathered up an armload of blockers and made the tackle at the same time. He just plays a quiet, great game. It is third and four for the Bears. Intended for Hall, and it'll be fourth down on that incomplete pass. Seconds only remaining in a third period as Jack Concannon, who has thrown for the only touchdown scored in this game, 39 yards to Dick Gordon. And that same Mr. Robinson in that very play gave Hall a push, broke his pattern, which was perfectly legal before the ball was thrown, and by the time they threw the ball over Robinson, it was too late. Twenty five is Hampton to his right is Williams twenty three that's Travis Williams and Green is punting from around the bear 15. Bear catch Williams at the Packer 30. And let's see, we've seen only Bart Starr as a quarterback in the second half. We saw Don Horn for a while in the first half. Terry Williams, 31, is one of the running backs. We have a capacity crowd here, over 47,000. The clock shows only about 20 seconds left to play in the third quarter. And Dave Hampton, number 25, is in at a running back spot. This is Hampton. That's his first run, and that's the guy we told you to watch. Take a look at Mr. Hampton here. Watch him cut. There he sets up the block. Now the cutback. Here he comes. See him break tackles right on through there. This, he doesn't look too big out there, but he's over 200 pounds, has tremendous legs and great power. Kind of shaking them off right there. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Bears 13 and the Packers 9. With Paul Crispin and Bruce Roberts, Ray Scott at County Stadium, Milwaukee. Fourth quarter is about to begin. The Packers have a first down at their 43. To the 47-yard line goes Kerry Williams, number 31. Like Hampton, Williams is a first-year back. Williams played at Purdue. Hampton at Wyoming. The Chicago Bear defensive unit, 55 is Buffon. 51 is Butkus. 57 is Pride. They're the three linebackers. Second down, six for Green Bay from the Packer 47. Dale was the intended receiver. Lee Callen was the defending back. And for Green Bay, it is third down six. There's Callen, number 23. 44 is Gary Lyle. 24, Rosie Taylor. Three of the four members of the Chicago Bears secondary. The fourth being 26, Benny McRae. The Packers on the ground, 79 yards. In the air, 102. Punishing tackle on Perry Williams. That was Williams and that was Butkus. He met him at the pass. Two penalty flags were dropped. Watch him now. We're going to show you this again just for the tackle. Here's a fine throw by a star on that little swing pattern. Watch now. 51 coming out of nowhere and they'll meet at the pass right here. That is the shoulder right there and backwards the runner goes. I don't know, uh, every time you look at a ball game in this league, Ray, you see another better linebacker. They're great. One of the Bears, we have not uh, been able to identify him for certain, was injured on the play. 
The Packers are huddling way back at their 25, so it appears the penalty is against the Packers. Pat Haggerty measures it off. The ball goes back to the 36-yard line. Personal foul, clipping. So now it is third and 15, perhaps 16 at the Packer 36. There's Rosie Taylor. He was shaken up on the last play, but obviously he's all right. Additional defensive backs are in for the Bears in what they believe to be a passing situation. Third and 16. Mar Fleming, the intended receiver. Incomplete, fourth down. And the Bears continue to put pressure on with a three-man front wall. This is great rushing. So the Bears are leading 13 to 9. 14 minutes left to play in the game. There is Sayers inside the Bear 20-yard line. Donnie Anderson to punt. 44 is Lyle. Fair catch, Lyle. And the Bears have the ball at their 33. Packers led 3-0, 6-0, 9-0, 9-3 at halftime. The Bears went ahead on a touchdown pass, Concannon to Gordon, added to their lead on a Percival field goal. The Chicago Bear running backs are Montgomery 22 and Hull 33. Montgomery up to around the 38 yard line. Jim Weatherwax, number 73, is in defensively now for Green Bay. 53 is Carr, 45, Rouser. Bob Jones is in now for the Bears as a wide receiver. He wears number 43. Gordon right side, Jones left side. On second down, five the Bears. Hull spun around at the 40. Jim Flanagan, the first to meet him. Third down and three yards to go for a first down. Time left to play, 12.45. There is number 22 from Texas Christian, Ross Montgomery, 6'3", 220. He's a first year back. You'll get an idea now, <clears throat> excuse me, whether Concannon is playing this a little cozy, which is somewhat early to be doing, if he runs or whether he puts the ball in the air. He's got a long way to run if he runs. Montgomery, 43 yard line. Take another look at this now. He tries to loop the ball over a defender, which means it's thrown soft. All right, uh, we got a little bit out of sync there. He tried to loop it over the inside defender, and he had to throw it softly, but, he, but the man tipped the ball. And in tipping it, tipped it over his own teammate into the hands of the receiver, who took it on the sideline, and they are like four inches short of a first down. And they're going for the first down. Fourth and inches. And watch that nine-man front wall, unless I miss my guess. Concannon has the first down around the 45. Penalty marker is down at the line of scrimmage. Against the Packers, five yards. They were offside. That you rarely see in that situation. I fully expected the Bears to be in motion because Concannon called it on a quick count, and very often a quarterback will have the ball snapped on a call 
before his seven men are down in a three-point position, and you get called for illegal procedure. First and ten, the Bears at the Bear 48. <laughs> There's a penalty marker, and Mike Hall gets about two yards. <laughs> Weatherwax made the stop. And it looks like Pat Haggerty is headed the other way this time. The referee. Illegal procedure against the Bears. Final score, the St. Louis Cardinals 27, the Pittsburgh Steelers 13. Ron Bull now, number 29, has replaced Hull in the Bear backfield, and it's first and 15 for Chicago. 12 minutes left to play. The Bears lead 13 to 9. Ronnie Bull hit hard by Rouser around the 48. Fifty-three is Fred Carr, who is in at the right linebacking spot for Green Bay right now. You know, we mentioned that when Sayers was hurt last year, the Bear running backs just simply picked up. They decided they had to, obviously. But I think the man who had the, his best year was Ronnie Bull last year. He had probably the finest year of his four or five year career. He leaves the game and is replaced by Hull as it's second and ten the Bears. They're at their 49. <laughs> Gordon, he has a first down at the Packer 39. Adderley made the tackle. Now, he, look, he's out here with single coverage. He's a quick slant in. The ball is thrown a little low. He went down with it, though, rather than trying to stoop where you generally drop it if you try to feel it like a baseball. He went down to get his chest in front of that ball when it came in, and he caught it. He kept it off the ground. So the Bears are able to maintain ball control. First and ten at the Packer 39. Ross Montgomery. Down near the Packer 30. He's at the 32-yard line. Willie Wood made the tackle. Second down and three for the Bears. Montgomery, close to a first down. Rich Moore, number 70. Jim Weatherwax, 73, teamed up to make that stop. And for the Bears, third and about a yard. Did you see Concannon turn around and tell Hall to move over to the fullback spot instead of the halfback spot? Poor Mike, I sympathize with him. He's new at a fullback spot this year and you know in the excitement of a game like this people are throwing signals at you and they're, everybody's moving out somebody's supposed to tell you but in the excitement somebody fails to tell you where to set up and that's what Cannon was doing it's third and one Cannon. he would need it well, perhaps less than a yard and he got it first down The 20th annual Midwest Shrine football game. Revival of the series between the Bears and the Packers. And they will meet September 21, opening day of the National Football League's regular season in Green Bay. To the right, Gordon. To the left, Jones. First and 10 at the Packer 28. Rouser thought he had an interception. He cut in front of Jones, but he couldn't hold the ball. And for the Bears, it is second and ten. Willie Davis now comes in for the Packers, replacing Phil Vandersee at defensive end. The Chicago Bear huddle. The running backs, 33, Mike Hull, 22, Ross Montgomery. Second down, ten. Time left to play in the game, nine minutes and a couple of seconds. The Bears are leading by four. Uh, 
Montgomery. Inside the 25. I think probably it's been noticeable to some of the viewers. I mentioned that when Cannon moves Hull around to the fullback spot instead of a halfback spot. In that case, when he lined up the fullback spot there, he was leading the play. And he has done this on several occasions, that off-tackle play or off-guard, and has provided some fine blocking ahead of the ball carrier. It's third down and five for the Bears at the Packer 23. Out of bounds intended for Gordon. So on fourth down, here is Mac Percival. He has already kicked two field goals. This is a very big kick for both sides. I mean, if the Packers can prevent it or the Bears can make it. If the Bears can make it, it'll take more than a touchdown to beat them. And Cannon holding at the 30. We'll watch from behind the goalpost. So Percival hits another one. It's 16 to 9 in favor of the Bears. Hope you're enjoying the action. Sent your way from County Stadium in Milwaukee. And Percival this time elects to put the ball flat on the ground. Packers immediately move up. Deep men of Travis Williams and Dave Hampton are around the 10 yard line. It's touched by the Packers and Bill Luke, a guard, has it around the Packers 42 yard line. And Luke did just what he should do rather than get excited and try to pick up the ball and run with it or anything else. Just grab it and hang on tight and lay on the ground. Make sure you retain possession, which is what he did. Bart Starr is the quarterback. The running backs are Hampton, 25, and Perry Williams, 31. First and 10 at the Packer, 41. Eight minutes left in the game. Butkus has the ball. Carol Dale was the receiver. He had it, I think, for an instant. And he got scissors. He got hit one way, and as he was being carried, he got hit the other way, and that caused him to lose the ball. Butkus was right there. Watch Dale. And, and the great faking by Starr gave Starr plenty of time. Watch this scissors. One, two. See him get hit there from both directions. And there's Mr. Butkus, the uh, swivel hips of the linebacking core who happened to be on the spot as usual. So Butkus gives the ball over to the Bears and they have it first and 10 at their 49. And Cannon has been the quarterback the entire game. He's in there now. Montgomery for a couple of yards. Lionel Aldridge, number 82, made the tackle. Ross Montgomery. He's done some good running for the Bears in preseason action. There was a gain of a yard. It is second and nine. 640 left in the game. Bears leading 16 to nine. Mike Hull to the 46 of Green Bay. In the grasp of linebacker Fred Carr, 53. One quick observation, Ray, on, uh, and you won't class Hull, number 33 there as a rookie, but certainly he's a rookie in his position at fullback this year. He's probably going to be a pleasant surprise for the Bears, but maybe not as the niftiest runner in the league, but certainly as a fine blocker. And if he, if he can block offensively, he can do a good job on pass blocking where they'll really need him. Third and five. And Cannon has a first down inside the 40. It's 
Watch Quintana now. This, he had everybody down. He had, a, he had just his line blocking, five receivers out. He can't find anybody, and he's being rushed. He didn't figure to have too much time with all those receivers out. So he elects to run, circles the end, gets by the first group, but look, there's an official in the way. He, he, he just lost his balance and couldn't stay in bounds any further, but he did make a first down. It's a first down for the Bears at the Packer 38-yard line with 5.45 left in the game. The Bears are leading by seven points. They trailed at one time, nine to nothing. This is Montgomery. Willie Wood made the tackle, but there is a gain of about eight yards for the Bears. Let's see what Concannon has done now so far. He's gone to the air 21 times. He has completed eight. One for a touchdown for 110 yards altogether. Second down and three for the Bears. Mike Hull to the outside. He'll be short of a first down by a little more than a yard with third down coming up. Wood and Adderley made the tackle. Leroy Cathy comes in now for the Packers. He'll be in at a linebacking spot on third and one. He replaces Willie Wood. So there are four linebackers in now now for the Packers. Five minutes and five seconds left to play. Gordon to the right. Ross Montgomery has another Chicago Bear first down. You notice how the momentum of this line blocking and defensive line play has swung. Some time back we remarked about the Packers nine man line in that situation and how they smothered the Bears for not just a stop but a yard loss. In this case now with the momentum going the Bears blasted right through there for the needed yardage and the first down. It's a first down at the Packer 26. Four minutes and 20 seconds left in the game. Montgomery in motion. And he is doing a tremendous job of running. Ross Montgomery. What do you have on Mr. Montgomery? He's another little surprise in here that he knows how to lower that shoulder. Indeed he has. Against the uh, Redskins on a very bad field, he ran well. And against the Dolphins, acquitted himself well. He picked up six yards at second and four. And time is running out. Three minutes and 40 seconds left in the game. Bears 16, Green Bay 9. Inside the 20-yard line is Mike Hull. Third down, one. We can see that Montgomery, number 22, is heavy. He's 220. He's listed at 220. But one thing I didn't realize, Ray, he is listed as 6'3". That's awfully tall for the type of running that he's doing. But, uh, of course, he's with so many big people out there, he looks like an average-sized guy. Third and a yard and a half with three minutes left to play. The ball at the Packer 18. Very close to a first down. Uh, could well call for a measurement and referee Pat Haggerty indicates that one is coming up. Jack and Cannon, meanwhile, is over talking with Jim Dooley. Fourth and about two feet away from a first down. Now, will the Bears elect to risk a block field goal? And Cannon's arguing that very point. He wanted to go for it. He figures, in it, and quarterbacks are creatures of habit. He's made this thing with, with the quarterback sneaks the last two times he's tried. He wanted to do it again. But bear in mind this, if Percival makes the field goal, 
now the uh, Packers don't only have to score more than seven to win, they have to score more than seven to tie. So Coach Dooley is elected to take the field goal. Kemp, Percival has already kicked three field goals. Can Cannon holding at the 24. He kicks another one. The Bears lead by 19 to nine. Percival will kick off. Ball sitting up on a tee this time. Boy, what a kick. Clear over the end line. No chance at all for a run back. So Mac Percival has put on quite a show for the Bears. If we can, we'd like to show you that last field goal. One thing that happened. Jack and Cannon is holding the ball. Ben Agajanian has been training kick holders as well as kickers. He doesn't have to train Mac Percival, obviously. But Cannon made a great save because that was a low pass from center on that field goal the last time. I'm afraid we won't be able to get it in, but he just, he brought it up in time, made a good save and a good set for the kicker, Mac Percival. Star quarterback. Harry Williams. Out to the 26 yard line. We're coming up to the two minute warning. There'll be no huddling here by the Packers. To go as fast as they can. And there is the two minute one. For the Packers, number 85, a new wide receiver, John Spillis, has come in. He is foot left. Dowler and Dale are wide to the right. Three wide receivers in the game. This is Hampton. Out to the 41 yard line. First down. 140 left in the game. Hampton. He has a first down at the 46 yard line. Starr has immediately asked for a timeout. The Packers, I believe, now have two timeouts remaining. Now these are the times and the things that preseason games are for. Starr is moving his backfield around there, moving a couple of new men around the backfield and a, and a couple of new receivers out to various positions. They are under great stress. There's your time right there. Everybody knows they have to hurry. They're doing this quick two minute drill as Ray Scott has told you with no huddle but everybody doesn't know where to go on each call and Starr has to be sure they're all in position in the right position and he is directing them around eventually they will all learn this that is the ultimate goal certainly of all ball clubs that everybody learns his position particularly under times of stress and Starr is doing a good job of moving people around in this offensive backfield particularly First and 10 for the Packers at the Bear 46 yard line as the Packers have been held without a touchdown by this Bear defense. Short of Perry Williams and Amsler that time. And Holman were applying great pressure on Star. If you get a chance. And we can't always show you everything we'd like to, but if you get a chance, and the Bears do have the three-man rush, they don't just rush three men straight ahead and fight their way through five blockers. They're doing some stunting. There's their three-man front up there now. One man will come in, the other man will circle around behind him. Get a chance, check, and see if they do that this time. This is stunting. There he Second. goes. Incomplete pass. It was intended for Perry Williams. For a moment, some of the players thought it might have been a backward or lateral pass. It was not. It is third and ten. Starr has passed 18 times. He has completed nine. He has had one intercepted. Ken Cannon, 21 passes attempted and 10 completed. One for the game's only touchdown. 39 yards to Dick Gordon. The three-man line is made up of Holman, 
Cornish and Amsler. Third down, 10. Short of a first down by about four yards with fourth down coming up and 58 seconds left to play in the game. The Packers ask for Here's your three-man line. Watch. See, see the middle man go to the outside. The outside man comes in. The middle man circles around him. This is the way they're confusing the blocking. That's Carnish right there. Now, it didn't work this time, but it has worked pretty often for the Bears. Good show. Bart Starr over in the sidelines talking with Phil Bankston, hands on hips, and to his left, Bob Schnoker. 13 is Don Horn. Bill Hayhoe is in at an offensive line position for the Packers, and we have just that many seconds left in the game. The Bears trailed at halftime by nine to nothing, but as you can see, rather, nine to three. But as you can see, the second half has been all Chicago. Fourth and three. <laughs> Intended for Hampton, penalty flag is drawn. Linebacker Dan Pride was covering the intended receiver Hampton. Once again, I'd like to clarify something. Here you'll see the penalty shown. You can keep holding. Or pass interference either one. An official was right on that play and did not call it. Another official, 15 yards away, did call it. And you say to yourself, why didn't the close man call it? Because he can't see it. He's in a position where he couldn't see the foul. But the man who's further away could see the foul. And that's why he calls it. It looks strange, but it's absolutely correct. Automatic first down. This is Hampton. And a fine play by Butkus. He got him from behind. All Mr. Butkus did was strip three interferers right there and trip up the, the runner at the same time. That was about as good a defensive play as we've seen this evening. There was no gain. It is second and ten. Thirty seconds only left to play in the game. Short of Perry Williams. It'll be third and ten. One of the difficulties for Starr, and you notice he continues to throw the short stuff and oftentimes the outside short stuff again, because with a three-man rush, if the Bears can make it effective, and they have, they obviously have eight other men on the team, and they are all dropping back. So that makes that defensive backfield most congested, and he has a difficult time throwing the long ball. There are people double-covering every long receiver, generally. It is third and ten. Evie now has moved into the front three. Frank Cornish bats that one away. It was intended for Dave Hampton, but you know something? There were two linebackers and a defensive back with Hampton. It's fourth down. 18 seconds showing on the clock. Well, this bear defense has done quite a job tonight. You know, Ray, as we've often remarked, there's nothing that brings the defense to life like a score by the offensive team. Ever since that long pass by Kincannon, this whole ball club has picked up. Fourth down, 10. It was intended for Dowler. There were four defenders back at the goal line with him. It is incomplete, and the Bears take over with 10 seconds left to play. Next week, the Bears will be in Houston. They'll be taking on the Oilers and the Astrodome. There is an idea of what Ray Scott was talking about, how many defenders were around the receiver there. There are, there are four or five white jerseys in the vicinity. So 
So the Bears take over the ball. First and ten. A new running, new quarterback, Larry Rakestraw, is in the game, and I think I spotted a new running back in there. Andy Walton, a first year back from Jackson State. The gun sounds, and the Chicago Bears have scored what is always a very cherished victory over the Packers. The end of the game, the final score, the Chicago Bears 19, the Green Bay Packers 9. I'd like to make a correction on that last play of the game. That was not Larry Rigstraw. That was their first-year quarterback from Kansas University, Bobby Douglas, who was uh, at that position on the last play of the game. Paul? And on that same line, Ray, I saw Bobby Douglas. He only ran one play and the game was over. Run over and shake hands with Richie Moore. Well, obviously, this is right. Richie Moore was on the all-star team with Douglas. Moore had a big night. Douglas didn't get to play too much because Cook, the other quarterback, had such a big night. But Moore played a magnificent game in that all-star game. And again, the final play of the game for the Bears was quarterbacked by Bobby Douglas, uh, not uh, Larry Rakestraw, as we reported. This is Ray Scott speaking for Paul Christman and Bruce Roberts, reminding you that the final score was the Chicago Bears 19, the Green Bay Packers 9. This telecast was produced by CBS Television Sports. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.